Well, good morning, everyone. I am, uh, to those who don't know, my name is Mark, and this is my beautiful wife, who I never get to have in the second service with me, named Nikki. And uh, just, uh, I think in July, right, we moved from St. Louis to here, and uh, so we're that new family. So, you know, new family gets away with some things, so y'all got to give us some grace today, all right? Um, but uh, we are honored to be able to communicate and continue our series on The Vow. And uh, like Pastor Tiffany said, you know, uh, Pastor Doug and Pastor Steph, do you appreciate your pastors? Don't you love them? <laughs> I'm so thankful for them, thankful for their leadership 12 years ago, uh, just just starting this ministry with the idea to forget religion, find God, and help people move toward the new possible. I'm thankful that they answered the call. I'm thankful for their leadership, and I'm thankful that we get a chance to serve with them and build the kingdom here in the Trouble County. Yeah? So anyways, uh, we're, we're excited and, and thrilled and be praying for them. They're teaching Star Class right over here, just to, right over against this wall on the other side. And uh, we have about over 20 that are in our Star Class today. Come on. And if you haven't been in Star Class, you need to you need to get into it. It's brand new. Uh, we they they redid it, and it's great to hear just from our pastors, the visionaries of this church. So I encourage you. The next one is March 10th, so you could sign up on our website. Well, uh, two weeks ago, Pastor Steph did an incredible job, and she talked about priorities. And then last week, Pastor Doug did an amazing job, and he talked about um, pursuit. And then today, we want to talk about partnership. And so I'm kind of going to get out of the way, and I'm going to let you talk for a second. How about that? Oh, okay. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I finally made it to 1015. So very excited to be with you. I heard you guys are the best service. So excited to be in this one with y'all. Uh, yay. Hey. Um, Mark said we're continuing this conversation on partnership today. And we just believe uh, no matter what season you may find yourself in today, that God has a word for you. So we know in a room like this that we have people who've been married for a very long time. We may have some newlyweds in the room. We have people that maybe once were married. We have people who are single and happy. We have people who are single and ready to mingle. And so we have a, a lot of seasons in the room, and we believe that God has a word for you no matter what season. Uh, you may even see a lot of young people in the room today, some of my favorite young people in the room today. And so some of the things that you can learn now uh, put you so much further ahead. So we believe that this uh, moment together, that when we leave, we're going to get stronger together and that God has a word for us. So we're going to jump right in uh, with this conversation of partnership and uh, are the vow of making this partnership about we and not me. And if you're taking notes today, the first way that we can do that is by celebrating our differences. That's point number one this morning. And, you know, they say that when you're dating, that opposites attract. And then when you get married, opposites attack. Yeah. And I think that maybe part of that could be that I have found that marriage is a magnifier. It's like a magnifying glass. So whatever's in you when you get married, the good and the bad, ugly, yeah, mm, it all gets magnified. So the things that are going really well when you're dating and you're engaged, like those things get better. And then the things that are different, I think that's when you kind of see those things kind of come to the surface as well. And so it could be cha more challenging to maybe celebrate the differences. Why do you think it's important to do I, that? I think it's important. Well, first, or do you find it hard to do it? I, I think it can be hard, but I think it's important. And I think about us is I'm introverted. Yeah, we're, we're pretty different. You're extroverted. Uh, you're a feeler. I'm a thinker. Uh, you're the life of the party. I want to skip the party. Uh, so I think for us, I think, you know, learning to understand and accept those differences, I think you're is. like task oriented. Yes. And I'm more people oriented. Not that I don't care about the task and not that you don't care about people. Yes. But you're going to finish the task. Yeah, I want to get the job done. Yeah. And I want to get the job done too, but like I'm going to celebrate who's getting the job done yeah. with us. Yeah. But yeah. I realized that, that, um, throw a party that you wouldn't and, go to. And throw a party, yes. I mean, you got balloons everywhere. I got balloons in my house right now. Y'all pray for me. I, I got barely any space, and they're filled with balloons, all right? My everyday balloons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I just realized that um, 
I you know, can, you said something really good last service. I don't want you to forget. You said you, what you don't celebrate, you lose. That's right. So it's good to celebrate. Well, yeah. So, what so you don't, don't hate all my balloons. Okay. Jeez, man. Y'all pray for your boy up here. No, uh, I, just, I just found that how important it is to, you know, Proverbs says iron sharpens iron. And how we can sharpen each other and how she needs my words and she needs my encouragement. Now, if I told her no to every party and I just I just tackled every balloon, which I'm tempted to sometimes, and and I just squashed, I, I, now I am putting her in a box where she can't be her true self. God can't bless your fake self. He can only bless your authenticity. And so, uh, you know, I look at it from this standpoint of we need to be able to be our real selves and have real conversations. If we ever want victory in our life, we have to have vulnerability. And we can't put on the mask, and we have to be true to ourselves. And so I don't want to put you in a box, but also I have to realize that God, you know, he sent you into my life and to, to help me with my weaknesses. And so I always think of it, too, like, you know, leading a lot of teams and things, I'm like, you know, they, they need the fun. So I'm like, Nikki, you just need to show up. Like, just show up. Just be a part of it. I know we got to get this, jo this job done, but I know it needs to be fun or they're never going to want to do this again. You know, and so I, I found this need in, in, uh, for you and to celebrate you. And I think this, our difference itself will make the difference. So we need to be who God's called us to be. You know, I used to always say, I don't want to be another wannabe. I need to be who God, I, I want to be a voice, not an echo. I, I want to be who God's created me to be. And if I'm in my lane and you're in your lane, then God can bless us because now he's saying he or she is being who I've created him to be or her to be. And so, yeah, I, I just think of it that way of we should celebrate ourselves and then like celebrate each other. And then um, think of it as our difference is not to divide us, but to develop us. So you, you have been developing me. We, we're going to be married 16 years in August. And, yeah. And you've been developing me. You've been helping me. You've been sharpening me. I, I used to be, like, so nervous to, like, I'm not so much nervous on the microphone. I think I'm more nervous in that small talk, you know, like. Like a party. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why we keep going to party. But I think I think what I heard you say is not putting pressure. So like yeah. acknowledging acceptance accepting that there's going to be differences. There's always going to be differences. You're never going to erase all of the differences. So maybe stop trying to criticize the differences or wish that the differences weren't there, but accept that the differences are there. And I what I heard you say is to actually be thankful for the differences because it's probably a little easier over time to start criticizing the differences when you're not thinking thinking the way that I'm thinking or not doing the thing that the way I would do it. it and it could get, it's, it could really even be the smallest things like, why would you park there? Why would you drop? I don't understand. Like the littlest things to the big things, right? When you, then you throw in things like parenting and, you know, you're, you have a different way of thinking or a different way of going about it. So it could be maybe a little easier to start criticizing those things over time. But what I heard you say is that if you can accept that the, there's differences, not put pressure right. on your partner to be someone that they're not, but be thankful for the differences. So thankfulness is really the key. And to go from criticizing the difference to being able to celebrate the difference, it's really about me making a choice to be thankful for the differences. Yeah, and, and so I, I just would encourage everybody in this room is you do want to continue to celebrate, even if you're just dating, not like, and I think sarcasm is, could be the worst form of communication. And I'm all for having fun and even being funny, but I also think that if, all, if you're only communicating through sarcasm, and you're tearing somebody down, that actually is going to get into someone's heart. And I, my job is to build you up. And my job is, is, is to uplift you. My job is to cover you. My job is to protect you. And it's the same for you as well. And so, uh, number one, celebrate your differences. And then number two, establish your core values. I think this is key right here. I, you know, I think, Nikki, when we first started dating, 
I think Nikki thought I worked for the CIA because I was in, interrogating her, asking questions, trying to just find out. I just, I was like, hey, you're good looking, but I need to know what's going on on the inside because you could be crazy, you know, and uh, it, which I'm the crazy one anyways. But, uh, you know, I, I just, I wanted to know your core values and because I knew that if we had the core values in alignment, I knew that we can get to God's assignment for our life. We had to agree. I think of that scripture, Amos 3.3 says, can two people, it's not even talking about married people, but this makes it says something right here. Can two people walk together without agreeing on the direction? I need to be in alignment. Now, we started to go through some of our values and what were important to us. I always think of this story is um, when we first got when we first got married, we took our ministry job together. We had worked ministry outside of being married, but our first job, married together, we're at this church, and we're do, we got assigned to do premarital counseling, ten months married. And um, I'm like, okay, why did y'all give this to me? <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. But in their defense, they just wanted us to show up and just go through a workbook with like we were just supposed to like have them. Yeah. read their answers in the workbook and be done. And we did not do that. Uh, uh, I did not do that. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt like we sit down, we're five minutes in, and I knew that this couple is not going to make it. I knew that this was probably a bad situation or a bad idea for them to try to get married. I knew, you know, I knew it, she knew it, God knew it, the dog knew it, everybody knew it. But I, I, I just thought, it's a first, you know, let's just take some steps. Five minutes later, I think I've been transported into a Jerry Springer TV show. I hate you. I don't trust you. Here's the ring. And I look over at my wife, and she's looking in fulfillment. Like, yes, I told you, and this is the best thing that could have ever happened, and I'm horrified. I was not <laughs> happy that a ring went flying across the room and that I maybe helped this engagement break off. That was not what I was happy about. I was happy <laughs> that we just kind of didn't have to waste any more time and kind of got right into it. And, you know, I'd rather uh, be in a room and helping someone realize that they'd rather be single wishing they were married than married wishing they were single. And, you know, they were good people. They just weren't ready yet. And I think that they weren't ready yet because they didn't know what they valued. And there's nothing wrong with that. It, it takes time to understand what you value as a person. And that only happens when you s spend some time with yourself and figure out what type of life do I really want to build? Because you're going to build out of your value system. Yeah. And so whatever your value system is, is the direction that your life is going to go. And they just didn't take that time yet to really figure that out. So there's no way that they aligned their values when they didn't even really know what their values were. And so, uh, you know, I really encourage people to spend that time. It's such a gift to have that yeah. season of being able to spend time with yourself and figure out what direction do I want my life to go and how, what direction do I want my life to build and, and to really establish what your values are a little bit deeper than just someone who loves God and is funny, cute, and nice. And, and those are all good things and you should be with someone who makes you laugh and that's cute and that's nice and kind and that loves God. But it goes, when it goes a little bit deeper than that, that's when you kind of get into those questions that you were talking about earlier because you can love God, but loving God and serving God and Jesus being the Lord of your life are all very different things. And so what do you value? Because I find a lot of times that people love God and their person that they're dating or they're, you know, pursuing, they don't love God like they love God. And uh, so, you know, establishing what that value really looks like and like, again, a little deeper. I remember when we were dating, you know, I realized by that point that I really valued generosity. It was a, it was a value of mine. I wanted to build my life with generosity. And so this is going to date us a little bit, but Mark said, you know, we've been married 16 years, so we were dating. That's 18 years ago. Okay. So I remember being in a service and I would just be watching, you know, there wasn't like text to give so much back then. There was like these things called like offering buckets and they, okay, y'all know about offering buckets? Okay. And they just, you know, pass them down. And so I would be looking, like, 
are you giving in this offering? Now, I wasn't looking at the amount or anything she like was that. I didn't know the amount, but I wanted to see, like, are you being an active part and, like, looking at the attitude, like, were you grudgingly doing this? Were you excited to do this? Because I wanted to build a life with someone who loved to give and who loved to serve. And so that's what I was already doing, and I wasn't about to be in partnership with someone where I was going to have to start dragging you along or fighting with, like, I I never wanted to fight about, like, oh, I I really want to give this, and, you know, are we going to, you know, like... I want us to be able to live a life where we our values matched. And that was one value that I was looking for in your life watching, like, are you walking in this? Yeah, and I mean, I think about today, we have values for our family. It's right. We've made our own, like, family mission statement, love God, be kind, have fun, be generous, work hard. These are things that we're passing down to our son. Now, these are things that we ag- agree. Now, there are values that we have that, maybe are a little bit different, like major on the major, but minor on the minors. Right. Like you value being out in the sun. I, I think we're still looking for it here in this area, right? Don't know where it went. It got stolen or something. I don't know. Um, but like, I don't really value that, you right. know? So <laughs> yeah. like, you hate it. so I'm good. So you know? I don't drag you out into the sun with so me. So I got to yeah. pray grace for you or I need to do some, you know, try to make things warm at, at home or something, you know? But, um, you know, so those are different things. And I don't think that we're all going to agree on everything, married or dating or or finding your future spouse, that you're going to agree on everything. But just finding those core values, because you shouldn't be looking for vision without first looking at values. Because if it's not important to you, God's not going to give you a vision for it. So you have to go look and say, okay, that, okay, what are some values that are important to our family and then building off that foundation, then God will start to give you a vision on moving forward. So establishing values. If I'm single in this room, I'm now, I'm saying what's important to me? What are those things that are important to me? And writing them down and seeing if they, if they align with the person that I'm dating. Because if they don't align and they're completely opposite, then chances are compatibility is not going to be good. And, and also long term, it's not going to be good because you're going to get, it's going to come down to, well, you don't value what I value. And so is there differences? Yes, but we major on the major, we minor on the minors. Yeah, so good. So we got to celebrate our differences, yeah. establish our core values, and then we'll land here today. Uh, number three, if, if you're taking notes, um, four things that we need to continuously do to build a healthy partnership, really a healthy relationship with God. We're committing, commit, recommit, repair, and adjust. Those are four words that you can write down and, and that you find that as a rhythm in your life when you're building uh, any type of relationship. And nothing healthy gets built accidentally. So if you're going to build a healthy marriage, a healthy relationship, your healthy relationship with God, a healthy body, a healthy mind, a healthy spirit, nothing healthy happens just by accident. It takes a lot of hard work, it takes dedication, and it takes a lot of intentionality to build something healthy and to be something healthy. And these are some of the ways that we can do that by committing, recommitting, repairing, and adjusting. You know, marriage isn't dividing everything in half in this, like, 50-50. And um, it's about being whole and whole and coming yeah. together and marriage being the overflow of me being whole and healthy. And you, not perfect, yeah. but you being whole and healthy. It's not this idea of this 50-50 partnership. It's all in, all in all the time we're constantly giving a hundred percent not fifty percent but a hundred percent so to be able to do that you really have to kind of continuously go through those four things we're either committing recommitting repairing or adjusting and i know you have a lot to say on this so i'll just end on this is that one thing that really blesses me is i feel like you're really really good at making sure that we're repaired and adjusting it's something that i'm learning and i'm trying to get better at but and i don't know if this is because like that difference of you being a thinker and being very analytical and, and an overthinker and me being more of a feeler, which is kind of funny because it's talking about feelings, but like I could feel a room. I, I could feel I'm, I'm a good feeler when I'm in a conversation. But when it comes to like me personally, individually, when something's off course or the argument happens or the fight happens or I mess up or the mistake happens, sometimes um, 
I, it's easier for me to just ignore and override. That's like my default mode is just ignore and override. Mm. And um, that doesn't build health. That doesn't add any health to our relationship or to our marriage. But somehow I default to ignore and override. And you're really good at not ignoring, not overriding and getting us to the table and going first and being the first one to bring up the hard conversation, the first one uh, to apologize a lot of times. And it's not like I'm waiting you out or playing some waiting game, but I do really appreciate that. Um, and it's helped me a lot grow in that and seeing the value of not just waiting for a feeling to pass. Cause we know that feelings come and go. We know that not every feeling stays forever. Feelings, you know, come and go, but they will wait forever. Wow, that's good. And I, yeah, I just look at it from the idea of I don't want to ignore and override. I don't want to suppress it, but I want to address it. And if I suppress it and don't address it, it's going to build up and it's going to and it's going to become worse than it is right now. And so I just look at it like, you know, I think when we first got married, you know, we grew we grew up in church, and so I, I heard a lot before I got married. You need to be the head of the household. You. The woman needs to submit to you. A lot of things that, you, you know, it, the word does say that, but we know that there's been people that have kind of used and abused that and kind of uh, used that, uh, kind of twisted scripture. And I think of that scripture in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, it says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And so, um, yeah, I'm to lead, but I'm to lead the way by the example, and I'm to lead the way by saying, you know what? I know we're not good right now and we need to fix this and, and I'm going to humble myself. You know, I heard someone say, be humble or be humbled. I'd rather just be humble than be humbled. Uh, so I just, so it's like, you know what? I'm just going to humble myself. You know, it's a fruit of the spirit. It's the, they use the word meekness in the King James Version. Meekness is not weakness. Humility is, is not weakness. Humility is strength under control. So what that is, is it's saying, look, I could be mad and I could fester up feelings and I could, but you know what? I'm going to address it, not suppress it. And I'm going to, I'm going to, it starts with me. I, I'm going to, I'm not going to point fingers, but I'm going to say, I, I was wrong on this and I'm sorry, but I want us to be right. The Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. So what it means is, is I'm not going to go to bed with us mad at each other. We're going to, we're going to talk about this. And I'm, I'm attacking the problem, not the person. I'm attacking the problem. And you know what the problem is? It's the devil. It's the enemy. It's sin. So I'm going to attack the sin in my life. And I'm going to say, you know what? My tone wasn't right. My attitude wasn't right. I, you know what? I wasn't listening. I need to listen a little bit more. Or I need to. And I'm going to adjust it. And I'm not expecting you to always come back and, and apologize to me. But I know that before God, I need to do my absolute best to be humble and humble myself. And it takes communication to do that. And so if I want our marriage to be whole, I have to, I have to be clear in my communication. You know, we said this the last service that they came up with a statistic that uh, the average amount of words that a woman says a day is 40,000 words. Dear God. And the average for a man is uh, 12,000 words. So I, I, if I'm at 11. Sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it is yeah, for us, yeah. definitely. You know, I'm sure that there, there's anomalies, but definitely not in this one. I might be at 10. I might be under 10. Um, but if, 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 you know, it's getting late and I'm running out of words, I, I, I'm going to be led by the humility and I'm going to have the attitude of humility. And I'm going to ask God, okay, what is it in my life that I can... And, and here's the thing. I read this scripture, and I've been meditating on this this week. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 36, last scripture, we're going we're gonna to pray here in just a minute. It says, we will all give an account before God of every careless word we have said. And so I want to be intentional with what I say because there's life and death in what I'm saying. Don't, and, and I want to be very careful what comes out of my mouth. And if I jacked up, I'm going to, you know, if I messed up, I'm going to fess up, and I'm going to say, hey, I shouldn't have said that. I repent, and I'm sorry, and I'm going to walk in, in an in a attitude of humility, and that's where that repair and adjust comes. 
you know, we never arrive. The biggest room in our life should be the room for improvement. So we never arrive in our marriage. And if we're going to last, it's going to take a lot of repairing and adjusting. Because seasons change. Kids grow up. Grandkids. All, we're in different stages of life. I think about when we got married, we were in a different stage than we are now. When, when our son was born, we were in a different stage than we are now. We're in different seasons and different stages. And so I have to be cognizant of that and go, you know what? I cannot operate and be in default mode on a different stage like we were dating. I have to be now, okay, God, show me. And how do you want me to? And I'm going to submit to, we're going to come together. We're going to come in agreement. And I'm going to submit to each other. And that word submit means surrender. And that's surrendering my burden, my, my, I'm surrendering unforgiveness. I'm surrendering. I have to do my part if I want God to do his part. See, a lot of times we're waiting on God to bring restoration and God's waiting on us to repent. Restoration never happens before repentance. Think about 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 14. It says, if my people, it didn't say when my people, it said, if my people will humble, my, humble themselves, humble, and then turn away from their sins, repent, then he would come and heal. And I think about it in our marriages, I think about it in our relationships, and some of us in this place have gone through divorce, or maybe your, your spouse passed away, but, and there's brokenness on us. We need to be whole, but it starts with, if God wants to restore our life, it has to start with humility of saying, God, I haven't got everything right. Everything wasn't a mistake, but I haven't got everything right. And God, would you heal me? God, I'm turning away from this, what I've allowed. Maybe it was the wrong careless words. Maybe it was the wrong attitude. Maybe it was the wrong mindset. But God, I'm giving it to you and asking that you would bless my life, bless my heart, work on my emotions, bless my mind, bless my marriage. God, touch my life. And when I do that, then God is able to do something supernatural where we're in covenant together and in marriage where God's able to bless what I can't. He's able to take us further, faster, better. We're stronger. Things that we can't produce in our own human form, God can do it because I've surrendered to him and I've submitted to each, we've submitted to each other and submitted under him. And now I know that he could do and a miraculous, amazing thing that only God can do. Makes all things new. Yeah. Can I pray with you right so now? Good. Father, I just thank you, God, for every single person here. God, I just thank you. God, those that are watching online, God, I thank you, God, for every person in this room. God, th 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 there's people here that have been broken. God, they're going through hurt, pain, shame things that have happened. God, I just speak healing to them now. God, I speak your word. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, that you come to recover sight to the blind and heal the brokenhearted. God, I thank you for touching their emotions. I thank you for restoring relationships, God. I thank you for working on hearts, God, touching marriages, God. God, I thank you, God, that it's not too late, God, that we can fight for each other. We could submit to one another. We could repair and adjust by your grace by your power, in Jesus' name. Now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, you could be in this room and you say, Mark, it really starts with me. And I, after hearing this today, I, I just feel this pull, I feel this tug that I need to make a decision or I, I need to change a 180 of where I've been, the wrong mindset, maybe the wrong attitude, the wrong spirit, and you say, I need to lead the way. I need to work on me. You could n not be dating anyone or interested in anyone. You could be married. You could be just coming off a relationship. No matter what place or what stage you are in, in your walk of life right now, I, I just know that God's speaking to hearts right now that maybe it's time to give your life to Christ or rededicate your life, reset, ask God to repair and start to adjust in your life. If that's you, you say, Mark, would you pray with me? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna throw out the net right now. And if that's you, would you just raise your hand? I'm not gonna point you out, but I do want to I want to know who I'm praying with in this room. Hands are going up. You say, Mark, that's me. I need to repair. I need to adjust. We have, we have some of our team that's giving you some resources, and we want to help walk along with you. And you could be making a fresh start today. If that's you, I just feel led. Just take 10 more seconds. If you know you need to do it, just raise your hand right where you are. You say, where do I raise my hand? You raise your hand because faith is an act. It takes you being serious and saying, yes, I will do this. Awesome. All right, let's all pray this prayer out loud so our own ears can hear it. Let's all say it together. Heavenly Father, we come to you today. And we're all sinners. 
in need of a Savior. In Jesus, we surrender our life to you. We believe that you died for us and you rose again. And we submit our life, our plans, and our hearts right to you now. Take our life and make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, can we just give God some praise?